Why does this carbon fibre engine cover cost $800, where in plastic it would be just $80? Does this really represent good value for money, or are you getting ripped off? I'm Paul from Easy Composites, and in this video I'll be using this engine cover as a real-world example to take a deep dive into the business side of carbon fibre manufacturing. And some of the numbers, they may well surprise you. So here's how this is going to work. I'll be making this part from start to finish and track all of the material costs and labor you would typically expect in a production environment. We'll be covering making the part itself as well as its design, pattern machining, and mold production. At every stage, I'll update three totalizers, one for the component or repeat costs, another one for one-off costs like making the mold, and finally, one for the initial investment cost of the equipment used. We'll be using dollar prices taken straight from the Easy Composites US website. And while we are based in the UK and use pounds, the dollar is just a more widely understood currency. Now, there are certainly many ways you could approach making a part like this, and some of them may well be less expensive. But to keep things simple, I'll only be looking at making a prepreg carbon fiber part out of autoclave, starting from a completely original CAD design. And while this is a fairly high-end approach, it is very typical in professional carbon fiber manufacturing. But don't worry, we do have plenty more accessible methods for startups and hobbyists in our other videos, so do go and check those out if you're interested. So, to understand the value from the buyer's side, let's look at the whole process from the perspective of the manufacturer and see whether we can justify this price tag. Starting now with the production of the part itself. Almost all of the costs here are direct costs, meaning that they are 100% attributable to each component made. Make 10 parts, you'll have 10 times these costs. As I mentioned, we'll be making these parts from prepreg carbon fiber, so surely the main cost is going to be in the carbon fiber itself. Well, in the engine cover that we're going to be making, in total, it uses 0.9 square meters of material. And so working from current roll prices, that would cost just $63. So in this $800 engine cover, there's just $63 of high-tech prepreg carbon fiber. So let's add this amount to the materials cost for the part. First, this prepreg is marked out and cut into a kit of pieces. For smaller production volumes, maybe up to around 50, this would typically be done by hand as shown here. But for larger volumes, it could easily be done automatically on a CNC kit cutter, which is definitely going to save a lot of time. By hand, this takes around 22 minutes to mark and cut the full kit of components. So let's add this labor to the cost of the part. With the prepreg cut, we can now get this laminated into the mold. This is done by hand, carefully positioning each piece of material and working it into the tight corners and ensuring really accurate alignment. Although laminators will definitely get quicker with repetition, this process is always done by hand, whatever the volume. From start to finish, laminating this part takes me, as an experienced laminator, 18 minutes to put the two plies down. Next, we need to get this part vacuum bagged, so we have some more consumable costs and some more labor. The vacuum bagging consumables are release film, breather, and vacuum bagging film. Then we've got some sealant tape and a small amount of flash release tape. Now, these materials are relatively inexpensive, and the total amount needed will come to just under $4. Again, there's no real option for automation in vacuum bagging, and so it's basically always done by hand. But again, it gets much quicker with the experience. Release film is first applied to the prepreg, followed by a breather layer. Then the vacuum bagging film is cut, and sealant tape is applied. The whole mold is placed into the bag, which is then sealed and connected to the vacuum pump. The bag is carefully positioned as the vacuum is increased and gradually being pulled down. And this whole process from start to finish takes around 15 minutes. We've also used our first two bits of specialist equipment, the vacuum pump and the through bag connector. So these should be added to our equipment total. 
The bag part is now oven cured under full vacuum following a carefully controlled temperature cycle. The full cure cycle for the XC110 prepreg takes around 6 hours and perhaps surprisingly in an efficient oven like this uses just 2 kilowatt hours of energy which will run to about 50 cents. Now with the pump running for the duration of the cure as well let's round that number up to a whole dollar of power and add that to our total. At the same time we should also add the cost of this oven onto our equipment bill. It is worth noting here that the XC110 prepreg is designed specifically for oven cure. Many prepregs need to be cured in an autoclave like this machine sat in the corner in order to achieve a pinhole free finish. Now a cure cycle in a machine like that is going to cost more than 50 times as much in power and add 6 figures to the equipment bill, but that's maybe a topic for a future video. With the prepreg fully cured the next step is to demold it and trim the edges. Although for high volume production it is possible to trim by CNC, for typical production quantities of a part like this trimming would normally be done by hand with a rotary cutter, which in this case took around 5 minutes to initially trim and then finishing with blocks and files took a further 5 minutes, so we'll add 10 minutes of labour onto our costs. And we'll also add in the cost of a typical rotary tool and extraction system onto our equipment total. The final step in the manufacture of this part is clear coating. This is done to achieve the best possible finish and also provide protection to the part. Depending on the finish and quality that you get straight out of the mould and how the part's ultimately going to be used, clear coating may not be necessary or even desirable. For instance, in motorsport you might just want the part to be as light as possible and adding paint is only going to add weight. But in reality for most cosmetic parts like this they will be clear coated. And honestly it's this step of painting the part that can be one of the most time consuming in the whole process. So let's now take a look at what goes into it. The part is first prepared by keying with abrasive paper before being thoroughly degreased and this takes around 10 minutes in total. Clear coating is done using a specialist 2K paint intended specifically for carbon fibre. This requires a spray gun, compressor, extraction system and PPE. Now carbon fibre is notoriously difficult to paint because any microscopic pinholes on the surface cause the paint to fisheye, meaning that a typical paint finish will involve several rounds of painting, baking and flatting to achieve that high end finish. In total this process took 2 hours of labour and I've not included the time to clean down the equipment as normally you're going to be doing these in batches and so it would be amortised across a few parts. Then we've got the cost of the paint and abrasives to add to our materials bill and we're going to add the cost of a mid-level spray gun and compressor to the equipment total. I'll also add another dollar in energy for the compressor and oven cycles to cure the paint. So here we have our finished part. In terms of carbon fibre components this is pretty much as good as it gets. An ultra lightweight cosmetic grade prepreg carbon fibre perfectly finished in a clear 2K. And yet in material and energy costs it's just $76. In labour the unpainted part was laminated, bagged, demolded and trimmed in just 48 minutes, but the clear coating did add a full 2 hours onto this taking the total to 168 minutes or 2.8 hours. Now keeping labour separate from materials is really useful because labour rates can vary wildly around the world, but if we worked on a labour rate of around $25 an hour that means we've got $70 in labour in this part, giving us a grand total now of $146 to produce each one of these pieces. But of course that is not the end of the story. Getting to the point where we can start making these parts for that $146 is usually much more expensive and time consuming than making the component itself. So let's go back in time and dig into those costs that come before a single part can be made. 
Rather than this being a copy of an existing part, as is often the case in composites, this engine cover is a completely new design that's been styled to complement the engine bay and other design cues of the Ultima RS. And so in order to make this, we first got to design a pattern which will go on to make our mold. Although I would start most designs in a conventional 3D CAD package such as Fusion and SolidWorks, for initial styling and surface modeling on parts like this, I find myself using VR more and more to create these forms in a much faster and more intuitive environment for these sort of styling operations. Specifically, I'm using Gravity Sketch, and if you do have to do any styling or surface modeling in your projects, then I strongly urge you to try it as it is a really powerful tool. I'm not sponsored, but I have been a fan of this for a few years. At the moment, VR though, it's definitely not the place for fine details and precise measurements. And so once the form has been produced, this surface model is then exported for use in a desktop CAD package. The VR generated surface model is then adjusted and refined in Fusion, and then extensions and returns are added to this to create the pattern geometry that will allow for trim and additional mold stiffness. Then the toolpaths can be generated for machining on a CNC router. If you'd like to learn more about CAD techniques for composite tooling, this is something I've covered in detail in a previous video using this exact engine cover as one of the examples. In terms of time spent on the design, this could obviously vary hugely depending on the complexity of the project and simply how quickly some of the styling and details all come together. But in this case, including some back and forth with the client, it took 15 hours of hands-on design time between the VR and desktop CAD to get to this point. So let's bring up the totalizer and add 15 hours onto the one-off cost for this project. The next thing we're going to look at is machining the pattern itself. In materials, this pattern used $335 of epoxy tooling board, and then the time on the machine was six hours, and this equates to about $7 in power consumption. Then we have two hours of hands-on or close supervision to add to our labor time. Then when it comes to equipment, our CNC costs around $10,000, but a small desktop router can be found for under $1,000, but equally, you could be spending over $100,000 for some high-end gear. Once the machining is done, the pattern still requires some hand finishing. This is always required and it's always done by hand, even off the best of machine finishes. Next, the pattern needs to be sealed. This is done using a special board sealer, which is generally applied by wipe application in multiple coats. Then it will often need a slight flat down before the final coat is applied. In total, finishing and sealing of our engine cover pattern took two hours of labor and used $32 of materials, and that's mostly in the board sealer. Now that we have our pattern, we can use this to produce our mold, which is also made from prepreg carbon fiber. Release agent is applied to the pattern and layers of carbon fiber tooling prepreg are laminated onto it. Starting with a surface ply, which is then vacuum banked cold in a process known as debulking. Following this, four heavier backing plies are laminated, which makes up the thickness of the mold. These also require debulking at every two plies. Then we have a final layer of the lighter ply added last to balance up the laminate. This is a time consuming process, which in total takes four and a half hours of labor and that includes the vacuum bagging. In material costs, high temperature molds aren't cheap either. This mold used $359 of tooling prepreg and then a further $6 in vacuum bagging consumables. The mold then undergoes a lengthy curing process, first on the pattern under vacuum for 18 hours and then off the pattern, ramping gradually up to its full temperature over 19 hours. Power consumption for the full curing process comes in at $9. Following its high temperature cure, the mold is then trimmed and any texture in the surface is carefully flatted away by hand and the gloss restored with a coat of sealer. The trimming, flatting and buffing takes another four hours and adds a further $8 in sealer and abrasives. So we now have our finished high temperature carbon fiber mold. Is that everything we need now to start smashing out the parts? Not quite. 
The first time a part like this is made, a new set of templates are needed, and these are going to be used to cut out the pieces of prepreg. And getting these absolutely spot on reduces waste and speeds up laminating time later down the line. So it's well worth putting in the effort at this point. I did mention earlier that higher production volumes, a kit of parts can be CNC cut automatically on a kit cutting machine. It is also possible to generate templates for this by unwrapping the surfaces from a CAD model. But even if you do this, you will almost always find that they're going to need adjusting slightly here and there to just get that perfect fit when draping the material in real life. So either way, the templating process can still take several hours and gives us the last one-off cost to add to our totalizer. For this engine cover, the templates were produced manually, then test fitted, perfected, and then transferred across to plastic in around two hours. And it's at this point now that we're ready to actually start producing components. We now have a full breakdown of the cost of producing this carbon fiber part, and that's from the initial design through to this finished component. And so, why does it retail for $800? Well, it's not because carbon fiber itself is expensive. We've shown that there's just $60 worth of material in this part. The real cost is in the tooling, labor, and skill needed to produce parts like this to a high standard. And this is where volume really makes all the difference. The CAD work, pattern, and mold cost around $1,500 to produce, and that is before a single part has been made. And so, from the manufacturer's perspective, if you make just one, the entire tooling cost goes into that one part, giving you a total cost of over $1,650. Make 10, and that cost is going to come down to $297 per part, but make 100, and then we're down to $161. Now that's going to equate to a revenue of $80,000 with a cost of just $16,000, leaving you as the manufacturer with a gross profit of 64K. So as a buyer, are you getting ripped off? Well, no, not for a part that's been made in limited numbers and to this quality, where the production cost could easily be close to half of that retail price. In that context, $800 is a very fair reflection of the time, skill, and setup involved, especially if this part's gonna get sold through resellers as they're gonna be taking at least 30% of that. And then there is the equipment cost. Following this process used $14,000 worth of gear. There are ways you could reduce this. For instance, you could outsource your pattern machining, but either way, making parts in this way is going to require a serious commitment in tools as well as time. If you're watching this as a would-be manufacturer rather than a buyer, and that level of investment feels out of reach, there are more accessible ways in. For instance, you could start by copying an existing part rather than designing your own. That's gonna cut out all of the design and the pattern making stage. Use resin infusion instead of prepreg and you won't need an oven. You could skip the clear coating out altogether. And of course, use hand tools instead of CNC machines. Each of these choices can dramatically reduce your costs, both upfront and per part, especially on lower volumes. And that's really one of the great things about composites. You can scale the process to suit your project and your budget. And that's whether you're making a one-off at home or running a volume production business. If you are interested in those lower cost methods, we've covered many of them in previous videos and they are a really great place to start. Or you could click here to see how we did the CAD and mold making in detail. Whatever your project, Easy Composites supplies the materials, equipment, and guidance you need to make it happen. Thanks for watching and see you next time.